is going on ladies and gentlemen welcome back to auto auction rebuilds we are back at copart for another copart walk around let's jump into this today with number one on my list an old honda civic coupe yes with 188,000 miles on the odometer with the window taped closed a tow away sticker from the choctaw police department oh this is great this is great uh it's an ex all right so she's loaded the paint is awful it's got a firestone tire there that looks decent on front it's got a mojave touring the window tint is absolutely awful the only thing i can hope is that it's a stick shift because then i'll probably be interested in it. it's listed as a run and drive uh oh well there we go it's got oh it's an automatic Dang it. Well, that, <laughs> not that I, I don't hate automatics. I don't, I just would prefer it was a, a manual transmission. Oh, she's dead. Windshield is cracked. Headliner is just coming apart. It's awful. Um, the hood, okay, well we can open the hood, so that's good. I don't know guys. I'm all for a good beater. Honestly, I really am. I, I, I love beaters. But this one, good lord, man. This one's a little rough, you know. Um, let's see what it looks like under the hood. I'm sure it's a single cam. Oh, yeah. Ooh, she's been leaking coolant. You can see coolant sprayed all over. You can see how she's been severely overheated. Yeah, you got a new radiator. You've got a new radiator cap. I'm thinking that was probably not the problem, seeing as it's sitting here right now. Um, what do you want to bet? She probably had a water pump going bad, and uh, it was overheating, and somebody just kept running it hot until it blew the head gasket. That would, that would be my guess. I can't tell you how many head gaskets I've had to do on these. She is seriously overfilled. So, yeah, um, I'm thinking head gasket. And eventually it just got parked. It just got parked. We'll see if she's even got any coolant in it. Be very careful. If it's a head gasket, sometimes these things can retain pressure. There is no coolant in there. Look down in there. There is nothing. Nothing at all. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> Let's grab a jump. And let's see what it does. Go time. You think it's gonna run? I think it will. I do, I think it'll run, but I just, I have a hunch it's gonna be uneven compression and it will not be running on all cylinders, but I could be wrong. I could be 100% wrong. Oh, I heard a knock. Okay. No, I hear a misfire. I hear a misfire. Hold on, it's coming. It's coming. Well, turn on the AC just to help it out. Put a little bit of extra load on the old girl. Let's give it a little rev. I don't know, do you hear it? Yeah. Man, it's, it's subtle. There it is. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's all we need to know. We don't need to know if it moves. We don't need to we don't need to know anything else. I heard them rods a banging. And that's that's a wrap. Uh, this is obviously not worth fixing. I might have considered it, but probably not. Even with a good engine, I, I, you can send it to Mako and get the paint job, you know, and it make it look better. You can have the tent peeled and new tent put on. That would make it look a lot better. New hubcaps would make it look a lot better. At the end of the day, though, how far are you really going to go with... It's not a hatchback either, you know? So 
to me there's just there's there's no value really in this car i mean there's somebody out there that could probably use it that wants to change the motor it's a super easy engine to swap it really is this is this is about as easy as they come if you want to do a motor uh, a motor swap or you want to pull the engine just put another one in it it's not a difficult job at all but again i just i don't see really any content and i really don't see any value in an old civic but if you do and you think i'm wrong Drop a comment below and tell me. Next on my list, a Lincoln LS with 70,000 miles on it that says it doesn't run. Why? Why would a 70,000 mile Lincoln with the 3.9 V8 that comes in the Thunderbird not run? This is an 06 auction dealer services, whoever that is. Okay, well, let's check the tires. We have an Atrezzo. So far, the body looks body looks really, really good. The paint looks good. Another Atrezzo. What do we got over here? Another Atrezzo. So it's got a good set of matching tires. The body looks great. The paint looks great. Let's take a peek at the interior. Low miles. It's got to be something simple for why it doesn't run. It has to be. Look at this interior. Wow. Oh my goodness. Nice headlight. It smells divine. I don't use that word often. When have you ever heard me say that at Copart? It's <laughs> this one. This looks and smells. Oh man. Yes. This must be what heaven smells like. That is a doornail. I got a feeling this has probably been sitting a while. 10 of 21, 70,000 miles. Huh. So this had to have been sitting because it's only got 70,000 miles on it. This had to have been sitting at some point around November of 2021. That's not that long ago. I wonder what happened to it. We still have the books. Look at this. Man, this is crazy for a Lincoln LS. This, this stack of books is bigger than the books that I have for my 2022 Jeep Grand Wagoneer. Wow. Oh, what is this? July 07 powertrain engine, two major engine failures. Uh-oh. Trannies or rear end 75,000 miles. Okay. Huh. Maybe that was a warranty. Maybe that was a warranty. That would be my guess. That was probably some kind of a, an aftermarket warranty or a service contract. All right. Too bad that the tire up front is flat. Let's see that beautiful 3.9 liter V8 under the hood there. There she is. And I wonder where the jump point is for this. How much you want to bet it's in the trunk? How much you want to bet there is no place to jump this under the hood? Because the battery, like the Thunderbird, will be in the trunk of the car. I guarantee you. Yep, that's what it's going to be. Maybe that's why it doesn't run. It may not run because they didn't know how to open this thing up and get into it. See, I'm looking for a jump point anywhere under here. And I am just not seeing it, guys. Plenty of places for a ground, but nowhere for a positive. Huh. Can we get into the trunk? There is a keyhole right there. So technically, all we need is to find the key. That's not mouse crap, is it? Oh, no. I do believe there's a lot of mouse poop down there. Oh boy, okay. So, we have a slight problem. I need the key to open the trunk to try to start it, but the key is attached to the steering wheel. Not to worry, I found a spare key in the center console. Probably a valet key. As you can see, this is still attached, but I have another key. Let's see if it works. Because if it does, well, we don't want to tell anybody. Oh, come on. No? No way. You fit. You fit. Oh, man. 
Are you serious? This doesn't work. I wonder what it goes to. The glove box, maybe? No? The ignition? What well, works the ignition? You're kidding me. This is so disappointing. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, guys. I've got some specialty tools that we're gonna break out. We're gonna make it run through the OBD port. Now, it's been a while since I've shown this tool, but I'm gonna go ahead and show it to you now. This plugs into your OBD2 port. This is a cigarette lighter adapter, right? This is a cigarette lighter adapter, right? That you can hook up to your booster pack and then plug your OBD port into. Now what this does is it kind of reverse feeds power through the car, <laughs> through the OBD2 port. Now you are not going to jump start the car with this. All right, but a lot of times, you see we got power there, we got juice, juice is flowing. A lot of times, if you're lucky, not always, but if you're lucky, we close this door and we might uh, be able to pop the trunk. That is a no. It's an absolute no, it's not gonna do it. Well, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah, we got no power locks. We got nothing. All right, that did not work. So what I did is I went ahead and I took the zip tie off. Um, as you can see, I did not break it. I will put the zip tie right back. Um, I just used a, a knife that I found on the ground to get the zip tie off without damaging it. So we will put it back. And I took the ignition key and I tried it in the trunk and voila, the trunk opens. So now the question, oh, yep, that was mice crap. Oh no. Okay, this thing's been sitting a long time and full of mice. Come on, get up there. There's the battery, a Motorcraft battery and it looks practically new. Interesting. Got a spare tire back there that's flat. Let's give her some juice. Let's see what she does. Oh, damn it. <laughs> that didn't, uh, that did not hold well. Well, maybe it'll run. I'm guessing probably not, but we went through a lot of work on this one. Uh, this took a lot more time than I would normally spend on a car. Like generally, I just I just won't spend that much time on a car. There we go. We'll leave that trunk open though. I'm very interested in this one. I think it's sitting at $125. Heard the fuel pump. It runs. It runs poorly, but it runs. <laughs> uh huh. Oh come on. I'll bet it's bad gas. I'll bet it's bad gas. I'd almost bet you money it was probably somebody older. Maybe they passed away. Yeah, she just dies. Damn it. I got a feeling about this one, guys. Power locks work. Let's try, let's try the valet key just for kicks. Let's see, it starts too, but it dies instantly. Come on. Let's try just cycling the key. On, off, on, off. Let's try just building up some fuel pressure. Could be a weak fuel pump maybe. There it is. It ran longer. I guarantee you with some car cleaner, she'd stay running. I think she's full of bad gas. Ah, uh, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna give it to me, are you? No. Oh boy, let's go smell the fuel. I'm telling you, I got a hunch that it's some simple fuel problem.
I'll be honest with you, it doesn't smell good. That does not smell good. What if it just needs some fresh gas or a fuel pump? 70,000 original miles. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And it ran, guys. It did. It ran. It didn't run for long, but I mean, she ran for a couple seconds. There's the oil. All right, oil looks decent. I'll bet with a little bit of tinkering, I'll bet we can get her running. Guys, I think this is one I want to throw a bit on. I guarantee you, we throw some starting fluid down her. I promise you, she's going to fire right up. It's fuel related, 100%. Let's try it one more time. Just, or a couple more times. Let's just, I just, I'm, I'm dying to hear her fire off. Come on, girl. She runs. Oh, see what I mean? Like it fires up for just a minute. Yeah. You're just not going to give it to me, are you? You're not going to give it to me. Cycle the key a couple times. I'm about to give up, guys. I heard it run. I know it runs. We just got to figure out what's going on. Of course, there's always a possibility. It's mouse damage. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, so when we cycled it, it stayed running longer. I do. I wonder if it could be a weak fuel pump. No, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, she stayed running. I feel like it could just pop off and run. It could. So close. Come on, girl. God, no, it's not going to do it. It's getting better. It's getting better. Come on, baby. Come on. Come on. We're about to have to give up, guys. I, I think I think I want this one, though. Yeah, okay. All right, we're done. I got to put that zip tie back on here, and then let's bid on it. Just so you can see, I'm not messing with you. The zip tie is is back where it belongs. All right, I gotta go get my uh, I gotta get my booster pack out. Dang it, dang it, dang it! I thought for sure we'd be able to get this one to run. I guess technically it did, sort of run, but that's not exactly what I was hoping for. Let's pull up the app real quick and let's bid on her. All right, here it is, 2006 Lincoln LS normal wear, clean title, 39 automatic, the works. 175 on a minimum bid. I wonder what the minimum bid is. I'm willing to go. Let's go 650 and just see what that does. You've been outbid. Really? Okay. Well, I mean, let's go a little more. Let's do 875. Winning, still on a minimum bid, non-running? Really? I would have thought we got pure sale by now. 19 hours left. Well, we're winning it at eight and a quarter. I'll continue watching the auction because this one I want really, really bad. Next on my list, another non-runner that may just possibly run if we spend a little time tinkering with it. I believe this is a 96 Chevy Suburban. It's not too bad. Kind of like that green on gold paint scheme there. I like it. Of course, the paint's peeling, which totally ruined it. Busted tail light. Got a four pin and a tow hitch on the back. A ball, I should say, a bumper pull. Okay, overall, not too bad. The tint is bubbling on that front window there. Tires, it's got some. You know, they're not great. The hood's peeling as well. Okay, she's a, she's a little rough. She's a little rough around the edges. Looks like the windshield may be busted as well. Oops, somebody's, 
Somebody's been tinkering in here, haven't they? Oh boy. Yeah, well, I was hoping that maybe this would be an easy one to get fired up, but uh, we've got lots of stuff disconnected and missing. The air intake tube is missing as well. The coil is sitting here, disconnected. Um, obviously, it will have no spark. The distributor cap is gone. Um, yep, let me let me get you back there. Just so you, you see, I'm not messing with you. The distributor cap is gone. The wires are well. It's it's there. It's all there, but everything is disconnected. So I'm assuming they probably took all of this apart for a very good reason. Maybe they intended to fix it. Uh, maybe it's got a blown head gasket. I don't know. Let's take a look at the oil. What's the oil look like? Well, honestly, oil doesn't look that bad. A little overfilled, but not too awful. Can I get it in there? Come on. Come on. One hand. There we go. There we go. Come on. Nope. Get in the hole. There we go. Oh, shoot, guys. I don't know. The Lincoln? Yeah, I could do that. This? Mm, she's kind of rough. Let's see what the interior looks like, and, and then we can... We can decide if we want to throw a bit on. So buy it now for 650. Ooh. Oh no. No no. Nope. It's buy it now for 650. It's at a $250 bid right now. You can see she's uh she's kind of rough. There's the there's a lot of the parts. It looks like everything is back there. Third row seats, the headliner. Oh. Nope. Headliner is tore up too. There's ashes all over the place. The carpets are dingy and nasty. 168,000 miles on the odometer. Yeah, I'm thinking no. I mean, this is kind of nice though, right? This this quilted vinyl, quilted vinyl. Yeah. Oh wow. No. Dashboard is busted to hell. Windshield is busted. No. Dang man. That's a shame. I. A door doesn't close. That's common on these Suburbans, though. That's nothing new. I was really rooting for the old girl, man. I thought, hell, you never know. You come out here and play with it for a minute. You might get it running. But uh, to get this one running, you got to put the distributor cap back on. You have to plug on the coil wire and the coil and the mass airflow sensor and the air intake. And unfortunately, you know, you can come out here and wiggle a wire. You know, they ain't going to get mad at you for coming out here and wiggling on a wire or something. Uh, plugging something in. You felt like just... But you can't work on these cars. I mean, you can't go pulling parts off and taking parts out of the trunk and putting it all back together. You can't do that, man. Um, it's got a nine of 21 battery though. So there you go. It's got a relatively new, uh, new battery. This one's not gonna make the list though, guys. Well, I mean, I'm gonna keep it on here because it was already on here. It's not a, it's really not a bad looking Suburban. I just, I just wonder what they started tearing everything off the motor for. Maybe the spider injection. I can't remember if this has that, uh, that spider injection or not, but those were notorious for going bad. You gotta pull the intake off, change all that out. Uh, maybe that was the case. Either way, I think this is one we're just gonna avoid. Let's move on. We got something real old and real cool next. Well, it's been a while since we've done any carnage and I was walking over to the next one that's old and cool and I saw this and I was like, this is not cool at all. This is, uh, well, it's carnage. I don't know what else to call it. It is, it is bad. I think this used to be a Toyota Tacoma. And we may have already shown this before. I don't know. Look at the way it peeled the whole dang thing back away from the driver, though. I'm, I mean, I'm hoping. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that everything just got peeled away from the driver. The side airbags and everything went off. I don't see any blood or anything all over the place, which is always a good sign. But look at the dashboard and the firewall, how it's just, I mean, it's, it's nothing is where it's supposed to be. Nothing is where it used to be, but thankfully, it looks like it just peeled everything back in such a way that the driver and hopefully all of the passengers would be okay too. I mean, look at this. This, this this is wild. This is wild. I mean, I'm sure everybody involved probably went to the hospital. I don't I don't see you being in a wreck like this and not at least going to the hospital to get checked out. You're going to have some definite bumps, bruises, probably some cuts. But this sure could have been a lot worse. This sure could have been a lot worse. And it looks like it looks like people probably walked out of this one all right. That's crazy though. It's crazy, man, to see stuff like this. Hope everybody involved 
is okay. Last one on the list, guys. How about a biohazard? 1966 Mercedes-Benz. I believe this is a 230S. Let's see, it tells us right. Yes, it is a 230S in white with 45,000 miles. And as I said, biohazard. Now I love old cars, man, I do. I think old cars are awesome, including old Mercedes like this. What a, what a treasure. The thing is, is Monkey Wrench Mike, he's got an old Mercedes too. And you know, I'm thinking with American cars, if you find something from 1966, well, it's gonna be super easy to work on. Parts are readily available for the most part. It's not hard to find parts, nor is it hard to fix them. Well, I've been watching him working on his Mercedes and they had some type of fuel injection system back in these days. Uh, and apparently it's thousands of dollars to get the lift pump rebuilt. You can't buy them, so you have to have yours rebuilt and it costs like $2,000. And there's, uh, it's just, after watching his videos, I was like, did they really have to overcomplicate things in the 60s? Like, really? So I guess Mercedes has always been doing this. I thought maybe something from this generation would just be simple, basic, easy to work on. No, 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 it looks like Mercedes has always been a problem child. Is this hood gonna open? Probably not, probably not. I'm assuming it opens from the front, although I could be totally wrong by it. Looks like I'm actually right. Okay. Boy, where's Monkey Wrench Mike when you need him? How do you... Ugh. Ugh. How do you open this? Um, give me a minute. Let me figure this out. Well, that wasn't complicated at all. You just push that button right there and the hood opens right up for you. It's got an interstate battery. It's got a straight six engine. Looks relatively simple, honestly. You got a fuel filter that runs over here to what looks like a carburetor huh oh and a bunch of mouse leaves well that's nice it actually looks like it has dual carbs one on the front and run on one on the back here it does it has dual carburetors fuel line that comes in ignition system looks relatively basic it even has air conditioning you've got a condenser i'm sure the points are inside you've got a coil simple fuel filter I don't see anything too complicated on this one at all. In fact, those fuel, uh, those carburetors, I should say, they kind of look like they were relatively new. Huh. Well, this could be fun. I wonder how much they want for something like this. I mean, it's totally not something I would ever try to rebuild or put back together, but it could be fun just to try to get it running. Does it have the key? It does. It has keys. Ooh. <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of rat poop. That is a lot. I mean, um, we're talking a lot of rat poop, okay? So I don't really want to climb in there. Honestly, I don't want to even breathe any of this because who knows if I'm gonna end up with like the bubonic plague or something. But I'll do it. There's the ignition. What do you say? We just throw a quick jump on it. Obviously, it's not gonna run. Whew. But we could throw just a quick jump on it and see if the engine turns over. And if it does, then uh, maybe we can just throw a quick bit on it. What do you say? Let's do it. All right, well, booster pack is on. What do you think the chances are that it does any? Oh, we have a light. God, I don't wanna climb in here. Ah, uh, we have a light on the dash. No, she's locked up. Damn. Yeah. All right, well, I've had fun. It's been real. Stomp my feet, good Lord. Uh, unfortunately, she ain't gonna do nothing. I knew from the very beginning she wouldn't start, okay? There was no chance this thing was going to start and run, so I know I'm gonna get people going, oh my God, there's leaves under the hood. What would you have done if it would have run? This wasn't gonna run, guys. <laughs> I can guarantee you this was not going to run. I just wanted to hear if the engine would crank over for us. 
and it didn't. Does that mean that it's dead? No, it doesn't. It could be unfrozen, I'm sure. We could work on her a little bit. My biggest thing is all of the rat crap in there. That's a lot. Like, that makes Swamp Vet look like a walk in the park. Truthfully, Swamp Vet was bad, but this is way worse. This is way worse. I wonder if we grab the fan. Oh, wow. No, uh-uh. I wonder how long she's been sitting. I'm tempted though, guys, I'm tempted. So what I want you to do is comment down below and tell me if you think we should try to drag this home. I think they're, no, you know what? I think they're asking six grand for this one. Let's pull it up and take a look. All right, here it is, 1966 230S. And yeah, I was thinking about throwing a bid on it. Oklahoma certificate of title, blah, 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 minor tins and scratches there. A little bit more to it than that. Uh, obviously non-runner. Yeah, six grand is what they're asking. I, I'm telling you right now, not gonna happen. Now, I, I'll throw I'll throw a bid on it though. Starting bid. Let's do five fifty. Maximum bid seven fifty. And let's just go ahead and throw that bid on it. I mean, I'll throw something on it. I will. I'll throw something on it. So there you go. We're winning it. Obviously, they want $6,000 for it. They're not going to sell it for this. But, you know, you never know. If you don't try, you never know. That's it. I think we're done. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get out of here. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed the content, hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. I would truly appreciate it. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.